Welcome. My name is William Messacar. I am a Master Model Railroader in the 4th Division of the Pacific Northwest Region of the National Model Railroad Association. And I want to welcome all of you to the virtual layout tour we'll have presented today by members of the NMRA. We would encourage you to find out about the NMRA and join in order to participate in these virtual tours. We have other virtual clinics and other activities for the National Model Railroad Association that we think you'll find uh, a big help to your modeling and you'll get to meet model railroaders just like you. So welcome to our tour and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, I thought I would start with a short history of uh, my model railroading career. When I was two years old, my dad brought home a Lionel's train set for him to play with around the Christmas tree. I couldn't touch it, but got me interested in trains. And when I was about 10 years old, my uh, I discovered our school library had a subscription to Model Trains magazine. And I started reading it and getting interested, started hanging out at hobby shops, got interested in HO, built a layout in my basement, pretty much by myself. Uh, my dad gave some advice, but I learned many skills, including to turn off the electricity before wiring in an extra extension outlet. <laughs> <laughs> but I discovered music and uh, girls and other things and I gave up on trains in uh, high school and college. And it wasn't until my son was about the same age uh, that I thought, well, maybe he and I could work on a layout together. Maybe that'd be something uh, we could do as a hobby together. So I went to the hobby shop and discovered Inscale and um, uh, while I was there, a guy, I heard me say that, oh, yeah, I used to have uh, Lionel trains. And he said, you still have them? And I went, oh, well, yeah, I think I got a box in the garage someplace. And he said, can I follow you home? <laughs> and uh, he uh, ended up buying this box of rusty Lionel trains from me for a couple hundred bucks, which gave me enough money to buy my first in-scale locomotive and a bunch of track and, and uh, get started building a home layout, which I did in California. I built a, a, a layout uh, in a room. And uh, when we moved, I stole the buildings and the rolling stock, but kept uh, gave the layout away to a, a friend down there. But uh, I did have all these buildings and all this rolling stock. And when I got here, I discovered the fourth division and, and joined it, I think at the Pacific Science Center show one year. And a couple years later, the, they formed an NTRAC group in the fourth division. So I was one of the first members of that. I uh, helped them build the, the group's corners. And, and um, while I was in Dave Kreitler's garage doing that, he had an old module that was from the 1980s that I guess there was a fourth division and track modular group back then. And he said, well, you're going to have that old thing. I said, okay. So I took it and it was a, a odd size. It was six inches deeper. Uh, instead of being at um, 24 by 48 inches, it was 30 by 48. So I thought, well, I have to build a matching module to, to go with that because otherwise it'll look silly having six inches sticking out in front. So that became my second module. And then because we were working on club corners, I uh, grabbed one of those. And so I thought, well, I could turn those three modules. Nobody else had a lot of buildings laying around. So uh, I put those three the, uh, modules together to make a town called Chesterfield. Uh, all those buildings, my kids had helped me build back in the late eighties. And so it was fun to uh, make a town out of the uh, stuff that we had worked on together when they were little kids. I wanted a track plan that was uh, a little different and um, had some passing sidings, but also had um, industrial spurs. And what I came up with um, I laid out with uh, masking tape on those two modules, which you can see here. And I cut, cut out squares for uh, uh, pieces of paper for all the different buildings I had, but I just couldn't. Uh, oh, and you can see I laid out the switches in the locations where they, uh, they went and the uh, crossing, road crossings and stuff. But I couldn't really figure it out, so I thought I'd, I'd switch to uh, 3D planning. Now, of course, I didn't have a computer that could do 3D back then, but uh, I just took the actual models that I had already built and stuck them down on the track plan. So here you can see the stage of that plan back in, in 2001, I guess it was. So anyway, I ended up with those two buildings. I, uh, uh, I, if, if you notice, the, there are three tracks across the bottom of the screen, but those three tracks are not the three 
end track main lines. If you look at the very edges of, of the screen, uh, you can see how I took the front line and split it into a passing siding, and I took the center line and split it into a passing siding. That was a strange thing because uh, end track guys are so used to seeing, oh, my train's on the outer track or my train's on the middle track. But when you come through my town, all those tracks are moved over one in your brain. And a lot of times uh, I've fooled myself into thinking there's going to be a collision in town when really the trains are on different tracks. So um, I put a street along the front edge uh, and then lined up buildings so that I could have a, a more of a depth to make the trains run behind the buildings instead of, you know, the typical uh, edge of the screen. So I uh, took the uh, corner and added that to the left side. Uh, I laid it out, the, the corners are pretty much just three tracks, but I took those buildings and, and uh, laid them out and to make an engine service facility because I had a roundhouse and I had a steam plant and, and a machine shop and stuff. So I ended up doing something, I tried to be creative with it and turned it into a shopping mall. Uh, and you can see what that looks like in that image. So now I have three modules and I built a rack uh, that would sit in the back of our Jeep. So I could slide one module in on the carpet on the bottom, on the floor of the Jeep. And, uh, uh, and then I could lower the top shelf on the rack so that it came all loose, slide a module in, raise that rack up, put the pins in it, and then slide the third module in the center. It was crazy, but I did that for a couple years. Of, long before we had a trailer or before we were in the trailers and stuff. I still had leftover turnouts from uh, uh, down in California. So I, uh, uh, one evening we, we were moaning about the fact we didn't have a crossover. So I uh, took those old switches and threw them into a one foot by four foot module um, that became our fourth module. And uh, it's literally just crossovers. And we viewed, it was one of those things where we needed it right away and we thought we'd replace it and we've never replaced it. It's been 18 years now, I guess. Uh, but I didn't have a way to run trains at home. But I, so I thought if I could um, get two clamp on balloon modules, one on each end of my three modules that I had, I could add that crossover module in the middle, in the back, and I could add a balloon on one side and a balloon on the other, and suddenly I could run trains at home. So the two th major things happened about that time. One of the club members named Scott had twin daughters and decided to lead the group. A and my daughter went to college and left me with an empty garage. So I grabbed Scott's corner, that became my fifth module, and uh, the club at that, about that same time formed a one track division. So now I have an empty third garage and uh, what can I do with it? Well, one morning I had breakfast with Doug Bulger and uh, I realized that if I took my existing town and the two corners and I added five one track modules, I could make a layout. Um, so that became the next thing I do. I could rearrange the, the uh, yard in a different configuration at shows. And so that became my modules six, seven, eight, nine. So now I've got the town and the train yard mall uh, roundhouse area and Scott's corner. And then I built this four to one module that takes the end track modules and turns it into one track over at the far right of the screen. So I had to have a mate for that. That became uh, this module, which uh, does the same thing only backwards. And then I added another module with an elevator and then the famous, uh, this, you can date this module to uh, the exact year because it, it's the Palin Interchange because it has a bridge to nowhere on it. And uh, so you know that it was from 2008. So anyway, instead of those two 45 degree corners that I had originally configured or sketched with Doug, I built one module that uh, would wrap around. And I assumed that I'd only use that here at the house. Uh, and not take it to shows, but it has ended up being very um, useful uh, at, at uh, in-track shows. So that's, um, that's the configuration I currently have. Oh, and I still have that, <laughs> that good old <laughs> one-foot crossover module is still sitting in the corner someplace. So.
that's my layout. Now, I, I with the new modules, I did a different way. I didn't have any buildings to put down or any industries, so I made everything rural and um, uh, just scenic the whole area as rural countryside. Then, as I built mod to fit those areas, industries, <laughs> I would go in with my bulldozer, um, i.e. A, a, a paint scraper or a, a, a putty knife, and literally scrape away the uh, landscaping just like a, like a real bulldozer and um, uh, uh, scenic them that way by adding uh, mod uh, models on as the, I completed them. Um, I needed a way to store all these things, and uh, I talked with Dave Kreitler, we uh, decided to build a frame to hold all of them in the garage between shows. Uh, and I scientifically determined the height by measuring our recycle bin and uh, adding enough room that I could open the recycle bin underneath the layout and uh, st still use the recycle bins and trash cans uh, and also store all of the stuff that's in a garage anyway, um, along with uh, keeping the trains up at a good height. So it ended up, my track railhead is 54 inches off the ground, which is perfect for end scale. I like it a lot. Uh, but it wasn't determined best by uh, I, or, or, uh, site, but by uh, a Bellevue City uh, dump, I guess. We ripped a, a frame out of uh, three quarter inch plywood and uh, four by four legs and, and um, kept Room. And, oh, and I also built a hobby bench, uh, uh, which was a, um, a cheap folding table from Costco at first, but then I uh, made the best improvement by adding a foot of PVC pipe to the bottom of each leg, and it turned into an elbow-leaning bench that was kind of shoulder-high instead of a waist-high table, which uh, was killing my back. So um, I've got enough track and industries and things that I can do operations because there's no crossovers uh, in the in-track uh, area. Remember, that's a separate module that's now off, off to the side. I decided to make the uh, three in-track lines, which are named red, yellow, and blue, into a, uh, three different towns. And so I pretend that uh, each line is a separate town because they're not interconnected. And um, in between towns, I make a run at least once around the layout in order to switch between the, the three, quote, towns. Uh, this is a picture that Doug Bolger took one day of, uh, uh, of my town. Well, here's the entrance to our garage. You can see the frame upon which the module sit. The recycled bins below it set its scientifically determined height. The blue cart houses all my electronics, a Digitrack Super Chief, PS2012 power supply, PM42 power manager, Loconet repeater module, UR92 radio, and a Loconet Wi-Fi interface. This is one of the club's original corners, which I made into Train Yard Mall in order to use all my existing older models, but make it look more modern. Here's an overall view of the layout showing the town of Chesterfield in the foreground. You can see three of the frame's ribs crossing the center. This is the original 1980s N-Track module that I started with. Here's the 4 to 1 adapter module that, when combined with its mirror image mate on the other side of the layout, can be used as a small N-Track yard. Here's 180 Farms, named for, well, you guess. Mike Donnelly scratch built those stock loading ramps and forced me to scratch build that fence and shed. My workbench elevated by its PVC pipe legs hides underneath. There's a light mounted under under the modules. And yes, I did clean it up for today. <laughs> Here's the other 4 to 1 adapter module. Otis elevator. Gallatin station.
The Palin Interchange and its bridge to nowhere, complete with traffic incident. The Russian bakery slogan is, you can taste Russia in our bread. That liquid propane tank was originally two cigars I bought on the golf course one day. I cut them and made them into one tank. Scratch built the stand, added signing piping. Free model. The black and gold sign on top of that building was a zipper pull that broke off my golf bag. <laughs> I realized it was just the perfect size for an in-scale sign. We use Velcro on the front of each module to hold up our black skirting at train shows and hide the mess underneath. There are a lot of puns on my signage, including boots and paddles, outdoor gear. Chesterfield Mercantile was the name of my dad's store in the 1940s. His signage read ALO Prop. The store's phone number really was only three digits. The offices of the famous attorneys, We Cheatham and Good. I hope you've enjoyed your tour of my layout. I certainly enjoyed model railroading. What other hobby can be shared by ages 2 to 92? Hello again. Um, this is a, another reminder that this uh, virtual layout tour has been brought to you by members of the 4th Division of the Pacific Northwest Region of the National Model Railroad Association. And we hope you've enjoyed it, and we want to encourage you to, again, find out about the NMRA online. Uh, both PNR and NMRA have an excellent website where you can get information about joining and participating in this and other activities, like our clinics that are held all over the region. So thank you for joining us today, and wish you great modeling.